What's up guys and welcome to another video. Uncle Drew here. We're gonna start off this build with the unbox of the Velka 5, but before this, remember the game giveaway at 50 subs of either Borderlands 3 or The Outer Worlds. All you have to do is like and subscribe and leave a comment on the video. Now this case is the one that I initially wanted to buy before buying the stack, but it wasn't on sale. It seemed like every time it would go on sale, it would be out of stock by the time I checked it out. So when this came out as a refurb, I decided to pull the trigger and get it, and I'm not disappointed. I mean, this is definitely a better case I feel, but my full review will come out after I build it. Now a few things to recall from the previous videos. I was looking for a case that I can use to put in my backpack along with all the peripherals needed for traveling. I researched several cases of which I will do a video on regarding the process that I took and the things that I researched and what was specific for me and I found that this Velka fit best. My intent for my video content is not to purchase things to review but purchase things and tell you why I bought this over different products and also to give you a future update on the real life use of the products I buy. Maybe you know, a month later, two months, or six months later, I didn't like the case as much as I thought. But again, I will do an update on that in the future. The Velka I bought was a refurb and it actually came in extremely good condition and have not till this point seen any issues with it so far. It does come with everything you need except a build manual, but you can download that from the website, so that's pretty easy. The case volume is 5.7 liters, hence the name Velka 5, and it fits all the components pretty snug, so make sure you have everything you will put in the case prior to building it because going back and adding it will be a pain. Two main things I wanted to point out just before we start the time lapse of the build. Number one, there was a lot of bubble wrap on this case. I'm glad there was though because the box was snug and it was kind of small. Number two, I'm glad it included two HDMI ports uh, 90 degrees at different uh, angles. So whether it's to, towards the front or towards the back or whichever side you were going to go through. So I'm pretty happy about that. Alright guys, and to wrap up the intro here, the rest of the video will be as follows. First it will be the time lapse, then it will be my impressions after they're building in it, then it will be the pros and cons including why I chose AMD over Intel and why this is so far my favorite ITX case. After that it will be what it looks like in my backpack and my final thoughts after that.
Alright, so after building into this case, I received a package in the mail of something I had ordered and was hoping it would get here so that I can build into this case specifically. It was the EVGA 2060 KO Ultra and it didn't come until after I had already built into this case. I was super excited to build into it and then I get this package in the mail. So now I have to take it all apart and install this, install this uh, graphics card into the case. So this RTX 2060 KO um, I bought on sale from EVGA's website. Looks like occasionally they'll have those sales and um, I was able to get this at a pretty good price. I was pretty happy about it. And this specific part is just a quick time lapse of me uh, taking the case apart and putting this case, putting this graphics card into the case. And uh, I gotta say, if you don't wait until you get all of your parts, you are gonna have to do the same thing I did. And it wasn't a very pleasurable experience. You really have to take apart just about the entire case just to put in the graphics card. So make sure that you have everything you need prior to building into this case because you can't switch things around afterwards. Uh, it's just there's just no there's just no way to do it. So one thing I will mention is there's enough space there for like a 92 millimeter uh, AIO that I am considering. I don't know if it'll actually fit. I don't even know how I'll even make it fit if that's possible. But uh, if it's possible, I'm gonna try to make it work. I don't think it's something that I can do. I haven't really looked too much into it. I just know that it looked like a perfect space for an AIO, uh, a small one, at least a 92 millimeter, like an Ace Attack or something. Uh, so I'll try. I will try it. I mean, why not? Okay, so just after mentioning about putting in the AIO, I just went and checked to see if it would actually fit. I just kind of eyeballed it. I think it will fit. It would probably fit this one. It's the Ace Attack. Uh, the Ace Attack 92 millimeter. It's a. I think the model is Ace Attack 645 LT. Uh, I think this one would fit. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> I'm gonna want to order it. I'm gonna give it a try. So uh, make sure to like, subscribe, so you can see uh, and hit that uh, notification bell so that uh, you can follow up with me uh, on this video and the next things that I'm doing to it. So um, yeah. Uh, another thing to note. Um, I put on four standoffs here, 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 and here, and I shouldn't have. I should have only put three, and so I ended up taking one of them off. Make sure you read the, or at least take a look at the diagram of the manual on how to do it, and uh, make sure you do it right. As this was another thing I had to figure out upon putting on the 2060 KO. Okay, so I have some images for you to see the difference in the size of the stack and the Velka 5. The Velka is slimmer and slightly shorter than the stack, but the Velka is 5.7 liters versus 8.7 liters in the stack. And this makes it easier to fit in the backpack, which I'll show you in a moment. But this is the main reason I wanted the Velka. It's simply the smallest case I can find that can fit a full-size graphics card or a short card with potentially a 92 millimeter AIO. So if you're looking for a slimmer and smaller case, this is definitely the one you want. So look no further. 
sell someone's left kidney and get this case for yourself. Uh, just kidding on the kidney. The case itself is actually really, really sturdy in comparison to the stack. The stack feels really flimsy from like the panels. If you look there from my previous video, you'll definitely notice the flimsiness of the panels. I mean, they're sturdy, but they're not super sturdy like the Velka. I mean, I thought they were pretty good when I first looked at it and first reviewed it, but once I got the Velka, I noticed the difference, you know, super solid steel and it feels thinner than the Steck and yet it still feels more firm. So I was pretty happy to see that. Uh, I just really liked it. That was definitely a pro for me. And of course, uh, the cons with this, as with any uh, ITX build, is going to be just the process of building. I mean, it is kind of tedious. It's very tedious. Uh, also, the screws, the small screws, the one that you get like a billion of them, those screws, like as you tighten, you just got to be really careful that you don't slip through the hole that they made uh, just so it fits real nice and, you know, snug. And also, so it just barely, just barely tightens or else it'll go right through. It didn't go through for me, but I noticed that if I would have gone a little too much and over torqued a few of them, that it would have for sure. So just be careful with that. Another con I think I, that I could think of right now is also that uh, all the edges are, it doesn't feel as smooth. I guess it could have smoothed out the edges a little more uh, on all, on the Velka. So uh, maybe they can work on that. As far as why I chose the AMD over Intel, eight core, 16 thread processor for AMD is, you know, about 300 bucks and you can't get that with Intel. When I got my laptop, which was a six core laptop, uh, that that thing was kind of pricey and now you can get a 1600 AF Ryzen processor which is six cores 12 threads for $85 or you can get you know the 2600 or the 3600 which is still way cheaper I mean the 3600 I think is like 160 or 180 or something so uh, it was pretty easy uh, it was it was not even a competition I mean it, it was non-debatable it was easy choice to decide to go with the AMD and a full AMD build mind you this is after being with Intel probably of several of you can relate to this 15 years uh, before that and uh, at least for me personally having computers you know as a like through high school and then college uh, definitely 15 years of of Intel. So going into AMD was different and uh, something I had to get used to. I know it's a little bit different than Intel. I, I really like it. I can't complain about it. So uh, definitely AMD the way to go for anybody looking for a new build. Another thing I would have liked that they would have included was not just uh, right angle HDMI ports but right, ang right angle display port. I would have liked that. That probably would have been pretty beneficial as well. I don't know if it costs a lot more to manufacture something like that or to you know outsource something like that. But uh, I think I definitely would have appreciated the uh, right angle display port more so than the HDMI port. I mean, I would have enjoyed both, but if I had a choice for me personally, I would have chosen the display port. Also, um, instead of just having the display port or a right angle uh, HDMI port, I would have preferred one of these here. Um, I think, I don't know if maybe the they think maybe this would you know fall apart easier or what have you maybe they thought that the 90 degree would be better maybe it was just cheaper to do that but one of these here uh, would be a lot better just a little short uh, stubby little HDMI extension would have been nice now my backpack is a hard shell backpack and inside you can see the Velka case uh, it fits really good in there like perfectly I, mean, I couldn't have asked for it to be any better than that now with it I have the keyboard the controller the mouse and an extra long USB-C cable. In the hidden compartment, I have the HDMI adapters, the USB-C cable, a power cable, and then on top of the keyboard in the backpack, I have my Corsair wireless headset. And I just zip all that up and I take off. And it's really as simple as that. It's, this is definitely the best way to do it.